Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tim Singleton from Achieve It Solutions. I'd like to thank you all for uh, taking time out of your day to attend our Achieve It webinar. Okay, so again, uh, thank you. This is, this is uh, specifically for SAP partners uh, in North America and Latin America. We've had two other webinars today, one for, uh, for, for Asia and Europe, as well as a third one for our customer base. And as, as a, a partner, um, you should all hopefully be excited by this product. We've had over 150 people uh, attend the event uh, today, which for, uh, our cus for our presentations and marketing towards products is really the best turnout we've had. So there's obviously a strong type of interest in the mobile solutions and HANA that SAP is developing and that, that Achievement has developed. So I'm excited to uh, show everyone in this group this afternoon. We'll quickly go through a PowerPoint and then get right into the product. So we're all familiar with the objectives of your typical warehouse management system to control the inventory within a warehouse, um, the storage within a warehouse, to streamline and automate the processes within those warehouses, such as your receiving, your picking, your packing, your QC processing, um, ultimately to optimize your, your warehouse and your bin locations, as well as your labor, and, and to improve warehouse efficiencies, customer level, service levels, etc. Most standard warehouse management systems do that and do that rather well, and benefit the organizations that implement them um, overall to you know increase the revenue and profits of those organizations so that has been the, the traditional WMS and and again they are still greatly beneficial to most companies so let's take a look at your typical technical infrastructure of a WMS system you have your RF devices which usually can cost about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars connecting to over the network or over the internet to a, a WMS database server that usually has a synchronization program to your ERP database being uh, business one. This is a high percentage of the distribution, the uh, WMS programs on the market today. Um, and as we're looking at how we're presenting this application towards our customers and to the business one community, one of the areas is really a cost effective, but yet still a very comprehensive warehouse management system for business one. So if you look at the current infrastructure of, of most WMS applications out there, you need those expensive RF devices, you need to get a WMS transactional server and database. The synchronization needs to be developed. It's not always real time. It's sometimes they'll call it near real time. You have your challenges of databases not being synced and quantities and bins sometimes getting out of balances, out of balance. And then you have a tremendous amount of cost, cost to upgrade the, the two programs, to maintain the two servers, the implementation costs, which also uh, quite often includes travel time for consultants to travel all over the country to do the WMS implementations, and then just ongoing maintenance costs for all the components. And again, I believe that's a high percentage of the WMS applications that are on the market today. If you look at what we're going to be calling Resolve WMS, and I'm going to get into that a little bit further in a moment, we accomplish all the objectives of a, a comprehensive warehouse management solution. You know, we are tracking the movement. We're doing all the inventory transactions and, and automating the processes, just as any other warehouse management solution is doing. But we're doing a lot more um, with a lot more flexibility and, and functionality. Let's take a look at what the, the infrastructure looks like when you're looking at Resolve WMS for Business One HANA. Um, you have your devices which could be a desktop PC, it could be a tablet, it could be a, a, an iPhone, a droid, and there are numerous industrial strength devices and tablets such as the, such as uh, that, that can go into a warehouse. And we found a number of uh, devices that you could actually, they have a separate uh, cradle built into the scanner, so they look like the, the good old symbol devices but they're running an iPhone or a Droid. So if you do have a, uh, a need for that, there are, there's a great range of equipment out there. But basically, we have, our, we have any of those devices, and then we're using the, the service layer, which we're extremely uh, happy with, with, what SAP has done with the service layer, and we're connecting directly to the SAP HANA database. So the infrastructure cost is a fraction of, of what a traditional WMS system would cost. And then when you're looking at multi-site locations, um, again, as long as we have a secure connection, you could do it through part of their cloud, but we don't need separate servers at separate locations. Really, it's a cost-effective solution. Tablets and smartphones you can get for a few hundred dollars, and they can become dis disposable. No transactional dedicated server, 100% real-time for business one HANA, no possibility of data becoming out of sync. Overall, it's a very easy and affordable product from an implementation perspective as well. If your company has set up business one for your customers, and you have the inventory configured, the units of measure, the bin locations, 
the associated barcodes with units of measure, bins, items, etc. You are probably 75 to 85% complete the implementation of our product. We are going to be discussing our partner services that we're going to be offering. But if you don't wish to engage in and, and, and learn this product, which I, I would uh, Strong, strongly recommend that you do. But if you choose not to, we're going to be offering uh, partner services where we can do the full WMS implementation on your behalf for your clients remotely from beginning to end. We have employees in Latin America, the United States, and Asia that will be able to run those projects remotely for you. So as I alluded to, and uh, that's not that's not going to be a big uh, topic of this con this uh, presentation, Achieve It is, is currently rebranding Achieve One to Resolve for SAP Business One. Um, with the release of 9.2, that will officially be the, the product name for our, our solutions. If you're up to 9.1, it will still be considered Achieve One. And just to give you a little bit of insight into Resolve, because it's much more than a rebranding and a renaming of a product, we've consolidated a number of modules together. And we're also releasing a new suite of mobile solutions, which uh, obviously WMS is the first one. Uh, briefly to touch on Resolve, we have what we're calling our desktop applications, which will include a, a distribution module, uh, much like the many manufacturing specific programs that's available for B1. Now there's gonna be a very robust uh, wholesale distribution program that you could purchase. And with that, um, we've included uh, a number of our modules into a single affordable application, including the advanced inventory replenishment, order to cash, collections, a number of other things as a as a comprehensive distribution program. And then we have several other program modules such as EDI and, and containers and so forth that will still be sold in, uh, independently. We also have Resolve Plus Mobility, and that's our uh, Fiori suite of applications. Resolve is gonna be available for Business One HANA, SQL, on-premise, cloud, and on-device. Um, it is worth noting that mobility solutions that are developed in Fiori are only gonna be HANA, and they're only gonna be HANA 9.2 and above. So as I mentioned, we have our desktop applications, which will be the distribution uh, package, which again, we'll get into later on. We'll have a logistics modules, which are our freight management and, and containers and 3PL, our rental suite, and then our integrated supply chain, which is uh, EDI, data messaging, and a few other programs that are classified for integrated supply chain that lets you do buying and selling and, and a lot of the integrated commerce that distributors need to do. Now let's take a look at the mobility applications. Looking at what we've done, I'm sure all of you are aware we have Achieve One um, WMS application for SQL, and um, we've developed a very good program for warehouse management systems. When it came to HANA, um, the technology we, that we had on the handhelds really um, wouldn't be supported with HANA. It was a SQL backend. There was some functionality that we want to expand on. And we, from the beginning, really wanted to make it a mobile solution that can run on any device. When SAP uh, released the uh, UI5 and the Fiori, it met our requirements for what we were looking for in a development environment. So if you want to look at uh, first the front end of our mobile applications, which again, there's a user interface and user experience as it's called now. We've used the Fiori uh, development environment. We're currently, I believe, on Fiori 1.6, 1.7 whatever version it might be that, that Business One is supporting. Version 2.0 is a fantastic version. Um, the interface is uh, is cleaned up quite a bit, very crisp, so we're looking forward to supporting that at some point soon. We're also using the SAP UI5 and HTML5, which gives us the responsive design that allows the programs to run really cleanly and efficiently on the uh, devices. And then we have some other web development tools such as Ajax and jQuery. On the back end, it's all, it's all HANA. It's all native HANA. And with the XS server slash engine, in the database, the, the SQL, the HANA SQL, I should say, and the service layer uh, being a big component of that. We're also uh, utilizing o, uh, OData and uh, XSJS. So that's the, the guts of it. Our initial mobile applications, or WMS, again, when 9.2 is uh, is available, we'll be releasing it to coincide that. We are going to be looking for uh, some partners to work with as far as a ramp up. So if you have uh, any customers that you think are, would be a good, uh, good prospect for 9.2 and WMS, please uh, let me know and we'll talk to you about that. Second quarter, maybe into the third quarter, we'll be releasing our quality control system for mobile as well as our equipment rental. And the container management program should be released also probably mid first quarter. Those are the four initial ones, as well as a component within the warehouse management is a new program called Freight Management, uh, which is a web services based integration to the UPS, FedEx, etc. So uh, 
we revised our freight control system and rebranded it as freight management, but it is a whole new program uh, product being written from the ground up. Those are our mobile solutions. When you look at what we have for Business One and how we're utilizing Business One initially, again, since we're reading and writing to the uh, HANA tables, we are reading the item master. So things like the new 50 character item number, we're supporting day one. So if you want to go after companies in the electrical industry, that's very, uh, very common requirement for the electrical industry. People that use mil spec numbers, often need over 50 characters. So one of the advantages that we have is that since we're looking right at SAP database, we can support things like the 50 character item length immediately. We can support and honor the bin restrictions that uh, seem to be added to the program every 15 minutes. So there's a lot of extra features there that we're supporting, serial and batch, unit to measure. If you're looking at the tables um, as, as all experienced Business One users, um, in this audience, you can now see that if these components are set up inside of Business One, we're, we're well on our way to the implementation of Resolve WMS. Um, as far as uh, transactions, we're, we're supporting really most of the, uh, the the marketing documents from a sales, purchasing, production, transfer perspective. So that's our um, initial release, and we'll be expanding on that as as necessary. As far as some of the things we're, um, we're we've already added, and we're going to uh, continue to add to the product, um, things like packaging entry. So uh, you can tie into the shipping programs and you can scan products into boxes. Um, the freight management, as I mentioned, container management for the importers that will allow you to do container receiving on a, on a handheld device um, and update multiple purchase orders um, on a single containers. We're also gonna be supporting multiple languages. Um, the initial release will have English, Spanish, Portuguese, French. We'll also be supporting, uh, supporting Italian and in German later on this year. So that will be a, a, a early uh, early versions of the product that will have full translation supported. EDI, quick scan, which we'll talk about um, momentarily. Quick search, which is our own little mini enterprise search. You can scan whether it be a, uh, an item number, a bin location, a batch, a serial number into this one quick scan area. You don't have to indicate what type of item, what type of record you're scanning. The system will find it and then pull open a inquiry screen that will give the user in the warehouse more information about the record that they're searching. We support 2D barcoding immediately. So if you have customers that have serial numbers, something in the electronic industry, they're receiving in 500 serial numbers, but that's all built into a 2D barcode. We'll read the 2D barcode and we'll populate the 500 serial numbers. We are developing um, and including in it several KPIs and dashboards using native B192 tools. Some of our UDTs as far as picking, packing, shipping, utilization of employees, things like that. We're going to be uh, including a number of those. QC, mobile analytics, which is going to allow the warehouse manager to have some analytics on the, da on the uh, device, um, and then some other user preferences and functionality. Quickly, that's a, a high level of the program, um, and we're going to get into it momentarily. But what we're positioning this product with, and it's something that I would recommend that that your sales or pre-sales people, whoever does the presentations for your company, presents WMS, whether the distributor or manufacturer has told you or not that they want a WMS system. Because again, talking about the simplicity that I mentioned, it, they may not purchase our software, but it will sure help sell your your company and business one to those organizations because they may look at it as a, a, something that no one else is bringing to the table for them. Um, and the fact that it is very easy to implement, they might consider it uh, right from the beginning. So I would recommend doing that. The, the motto that we have or the tagline that we have is simply do more. And we are looking at what we can give the warehouse worker that they can't get on an old scanner. And if you look at your typical scanner, either they're character based, whether it's a bacon product or not a beacon product, or if it's a, if it's a Windows program like our own, there's only so much information they can put on that screen. And when the average warehouse worker is in, is in their mid-20s, they're a lot more comfortable with a tablet or a phone than they are a 1970s developed scanner. Right away, those warehouse and seasonal warehouse workers will gravitate and, and be comfortable with our product and these devices. But beyond that, we're, we're providing information that the warehouse worker and the production worker can answer a lot of questions on their own. The amount of information we can control, so it's not like they're getting full access to B1, but if you do want to find out more information about uh, an item in a bin location or more details about a batch, where things are, when products are coming in, we're providing a good amount of information for them that they can answer their own questions and move forward in their process and not slow slow up their picking and packing. And the other thing that we're uh, going to be incorporating in the in our upcoming release is going to be the capability to capture images utilizing the camera on these devices. 
but incorporating them to the transactions that are updated inside of Business One. Perfect example could be a, a purchase order receipt or an RMA receipt where the box is damaged or the product is scratched, whatever the case may be. Warehouse worker could take a picture. That image is automatically saved as an attachment inside the Business One database. Another thing that uh, we're going to be incorporating is the capability to pull open select uh, attachments that have been created inside of Business One. So a good example would be MSDS sheets uh, for those in the chemical industry or product specifications, possibly during manufacturing. If you want to pull open a PDF associated with that finished good or component to get the drawing or more information on it, don't have to stop the process. We'll have that capability built in. A few other things like alerts and approvals. So um, again, since the audience during our sessions are very familiar with Business One and, and uh, distribution manufacturing, I welcome any suggestions that you could think of that we could look to incorporate that may be inside of Business One or even if it's not a native Business One feature, but you've heard certain requests from customers, we'll look to incorporate that. One brief example, and then I'll move on to the next area in the, in the presentation. Um, we have a customer of ours that we're discussing transitioning from our SQL version to HANA and their warehouse manager wanted to have a snapshot of a bin location at a given point in time. And they'll say, well, I knew the product was in this bin location last week. Where is it now? So we have a bin, we have a bin increase screen right now, but it's real time. He wants to see it as of a specific point in time. So we have all that information in the database. We're going to be adding it to the product. So we could say, let me look at bin one, two, three. And here's all the products and the quantity as of January 15th. We're also going to take that idea and put it at the item level to see where that item was in the warehouse at a given point in time. So those are the type of things that we do welcome uh, suggestions for uh, about. Um, I mentioned briefly to you that we uh, have the partner services. You'll be happy to know all the documentation has been updated. We've had a team of employees that have updated the documentation for Achieve One up until 9.1. So those will be um, available. They're actually available as of today that uh, we can send everyone a link. So every module has been updated for Achieve One 9.1, and we're finishing up the Resolve 9.2 documentation for HANA, and they'll be available when, when 9.2 comes out as well. But we do do look at the a partner enablement program. We have a full services team, and we've actually, one of the person that's overseeing the documentation and the testing came from a large SAP user that was using SAP WM. And she's been in the warehouse industry as a, uh, a supervisor and a super user for uh, the large warehouse management system for uh, SAP. So we, we have a good team that we've added and a lot of good things we've been doing behind the scenes. So we're excited about it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to take questions today because I had a hard time unmuting everybody uh, earlier. Plus, we're going to probably be a little bit short on time. So uh, at the end, if there are questions, please feel free to email me and I'll answer them directly. Um, contact information is here. Uh, I think everyone has my contact information. But uh, if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to uh, give me a call. Okay, so let's go first into, uh, let's go into the, the system. So we have our receiving. So let me go through the program a little bit uh, to start off with. We have our picking. We are using the Pick Pack Manager. We no longer have uh, our own logistics manager. Um, to SAP's credit, they've done a very, very good job in improving the Pick Pack Manager. Um, you're all familiar with it. Now you can do your picks of sales orders, AR reserve invoices, transfers, production tickets, et cetera. So having that, we're utilizing that and the standard SAP pick tickets, deliveries, et cetera. You can take a look at the, the sales order picks, the AR reserve invoice picks. And again, I'm going to momentarily get into uh, specific transactions. Under receiving, we have our purchase order receiving. We also have our container receiving. If you're, you have customers that are doing importing, you could do the container receiving. Under our inventory menu, goods issue, goods receipt, warehouse transfer, bulk bin transfer. Let's move out. Every product out of bin 01 is going to go in bin 02, immediate. Inventory transfer request picks and receivings. The production, production uh, picks and receiving. Inventory counting. Right now we have bin counting. We're waiting on SAP. I believe it's in one of the next patch levels to open up the service layer for physical inventory, for the physical inventory counts. So once uh, that service layer is open, We'll be doing, be able to do full physical inventory and cycle counting and so forth. So right now we have a, a simple bin count system. We have our analytics, which I'll show you more on the development system that we have that has a, a level after this. And then we have our QC system, which again, lets you do your in, inbound inspections, dispositions. We have some reports, but another really good use for a camera or documentation as part of your QC process. So this is our, our main system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just kind of going into 
where we integrate into business one briefly, I've mentioned to you already, so I don't want to lose anybody on it, but we're looking at when we look at a product, we can look at the, the barcode, the primary barcode that could be for the selling unit of measure. If you do have it set up where it is multiple units of measure, we're reading that barcode. So for each six pack case, so if someone ordered 478 uh, I, uh, ear, ear pods, you could bring in so many cases, so many six packs, so many eaches, you can bring in all the different units of measure. We, once we scan that barcode, we know that it's a case which equals 50 or 100, whatever it is. We're also doing the same thing at the bin locations, at the items across the board where there's a barcode inside of business one, we're recognizing and, and reading that. Um, we also have the use of the employee master, um, which will indicate which mobile licenses uh, you've purchased or subscribed to on behalf of your customer. But within that, you have specific features that the, the employee is allowed to do. They may be allowed to do sales order picking, but not reserve invoice picking. So you could turn those features on or off based off their jobs description. Default warehouse, hide finished scanned products. So if you're receiving a large purchase order and you don't want to list 50 items that you've already received, you could turn that off. And you could have a, a default to be a compact mobile design. So even though we're using the responsive design, if this switch is on, there are smaller fonts that are used. So if it's an iPhone 6, it fits even that much better. Okay, so let's go into the WMS itself right now. I'm going to start off with uh, initially, just to give you an idea, you're going to see much like any application we've all worked with, build one screen and then you duplicate it, you tweak it as necessary. So a lot of these things I'm not going to repeat over and over again, but I'll start off with the goods receipt. I have uh, a goods receipt. I'm bringing some product in. I want to scan where I'm bringing that product in. I'll first scan where it's coming in and the first one I'll do is I'll do those, I uh, forget the product number, AP1000 or 10,000. The one that I set up to do multiple units of, of measure. First, I'm going to bring in a case. Scan it, AP1000. I got a case. I have one in five cases. Now I want to bring in a six pack. Let's go to a different bin location. Same item. We'll bring in a six pack. We'll bring in five six packs. We'll bring the same and I will do the eaches. And you'll see here and I have that item coming in three different units of measure, two different bin locations. So while I'm here, I may as well do a serialized item. So again, let's bring in, we'll go to bin 12. Now I'm at bin 12. I need to bring in, I got uh, a bunch of iPhones, whatever it might be. Just by doing the seven, come in. Seven. I've received in one product, three different units of measure. I received in seven serialized items. All right, let's come back into B1. There's the goods receipt I did. You'll see it was done at 14.30. It's still less than a minute ago that the whole thing processed and updated. Here are the items in the, in the various units in measure. Here's the bin breakdown. Then for the iPhone, go to serial numbers. There's my, there's my uh, item number and there's my seven serial numbers. Pretty easy to demo, so easy that a salesperson can do it. Okay, let's go through a few of the other features. And again, it's it's going to be very, very similar. Again, as I mentioned, it's we're, we're using a lot of the same over and over again, frankly, just to make it more consistent and easy to use. But let's go in and cut a PO inside of B1, and we'll do that same process. We'll go through the Pick Pack Manager, which really gives us a lot of nice features because of uh, what SAP has done with the Pick Pack Manager. So we're going to work on PO28, and this time we'll say it's from Sunshine Toys today. It's PO28. We're going to bring in uh, the batch, which is the, the chocolate milk. 099 is just a regular item. And then the last one we'll bring in, hang on, that's PO28, and it's the same thing. Bring the PO in, scan it, look for it, case may be. PO28, you have your PO. Now you'll see here, we have quick scan. Although we, we think we have a great technology and a lot of, we are trying to appreciate the fact that the warehouse worker, a lot of times just wants to get product in. They're used to maybe a legacy WMS system and they want it to have it to be fast and accurate. So we've had this quick scan feature, which you don't have to double click a screen. You don't have to receive things in sequentially. All you have to do is start to scan. Starting off with, I'm gonna receive in three of the A099 first, I have that. There's the barcode. What bin location am I standing in front of? There's my bin location, now I do five. If I do an item lookup right now, it's only looking up 
the items that remain on the purchase order that hasn't been received. So that the warehouse worker is focused on, okay, this is all I have left to do. Now I selected it. Obviously you could keep continue to scan the way I was scanning before, but just I want to show you that feature. Again, we'll put it into bin location. How many we're we gonna put in there? Let's just put all 200, put into the bin. We'll do our 200, there we go. Now let's look at what we can scan. Let's scan in the batch number, each level, that's how it's stocked. If you have a batch attribute, so if you do have something that's part of a label, so let's say it's a, a density that's thick or thin, or if that's part of it, you could scan that. You could scan the country of origin. If you want to scan a, a production date, expiration date, once you're done with that, you can say, all right, I'm going to commit them. Uh, you'll see I'm all done. But the chocolate milk smelled a little milk smelt funky please. We're done. So here's my partial receiving. If you haven't demonstrated a relationship map a thousand times, so here's a thousand one. Here's my goods receipt. There's a time and date stamp. Again, I have, and then if you want to look at the notes that came through, for now we put them in the opening and closing, and that comes through automatically. Those are some of the things that we have in here. Let's now turn to looking at the pick pack process. The pick pack manager functionality that's, that's coming to the this product and this, this feature has really been good. And it, it allows you to tell customers, yes, we can do wave picks. Yes, we could do zone picks. Yes, we can assign picks to specific people in the warehouse. Our WMS is really having that functionality, some of which we're expanding on, but some of which we're using really natively because Business One is, is allowing us to do that. When you go through the wizard and you say, I wanna split a pick ticket by items and just have all the all one item on a pick ticket or a group of items, guess what? That's, a, that's, that's also called a wave pick. Or I just want to pick it to one uh, area of the warehouse. Paul Worth works in zone A and I want to give him all his items. And you know somebody else works in, in zone B and I want to give them their items and they've pulled together and Mike zone C and he, he packages them. So this really gives us a lot, of, a lot of flexibility and functionality. Everyone you know, on the phone knows how to use this, but again, the sales, production, so forth. Use your filters, the, all the UDFs that we can use. So if there's extra things that you need to have for picking, some rules, maybe you want to call it hot orders or order source. If it comes over and it's an Amazon order and they don't want to be fined, you may want to have Amazon yes or no, and those orders go out first. So obviously there's lots of good things you could do with that. Typical thing, you have your, you know, you have your picks, go out and, and again, as I was saying, looking at your generation wizard, um, you could do filters to only release different criteria, split the picks, uh, gives us extra flexibility there. Um, go out, now we have our pick ticket generated. Here's all our different pick tickets. So we'll work on 12 on the other side, and again, it's the same. Bin location, scan, scan, or Again, this time I'll see it. we got one, add it, next product, scan, whatever, same thing we did earlier, add it, sales order 12 is done, finish it. Um, oh, I got to turn up this, we're going to have that. I've done my pick. There's your pick 12. Done at 1441, same time. Okay, so all of the SAP transactions are doing this, the transfers and so forth. Um, what I'd like to do now is uh, share with you a little bit of what uh, the developers are working on, which really uh, the version I have is uh, a development version that we use for uh, demonstrations. We have a uh, one that we're developing that will be part of 9.2, um, and I think we're probably uh, ready for 9.2 whenever whenever SAP releases that. I'm not sure of the exact release date. I know it's in the control release or ramp up, but uh, we'll be ready when that's, uh, when that's ready. So let's go down into our development environment here. Okay, so this is 9.2. We'll share with you here what we have for 9.2. As I mentioned to you, uh, a few things that we're doing for 9.2, and this is running the local uh, browser on, that, uh, on a VM server. We have the, the quick search. Um, in the version that I have, you have to say whether you're choosing an item, a serial, or batch, and so forth. So what the developers did, they said, all right, we'll just scan whatever the person wants to scan, and we'll tell you what it is. 
So the first thing I have in front of me is a piece of paper. I'll scan. Okay, so that says, oh, you're in front of this bin. Here are the items within the bin. Here are the breakdown of those items, the quantities, the unit of measure. And oh, if you have a serial batch number, why don't you display those batch numbers? If you want to look at the details, we pulled in some information about the bin. But this, again, if this is on a tablet and you're looking for information, it, it, it's wonderful. The other thing that we've added, again, borrowing some ideas from Standard Business One, is the capability to move columns around or eliminate columns altogether. So if you don't want to see units of measure or whatever, it might be a description of an item, you could turn them off um, it, just to make it that much easier for you. Also, um, sorting of the columns. So if you want to look at the, the let's say, this, the descending quantity order in the bin, what's taking up the most space, oh, I-101 has the most products in there. These little icons, I'm showing you the bin right now, but this is where we're going to put the attachments for the PDFs. This is where we're going to put the attachments for the images. And this is where I think it's going to really differentiate our, us from frankly, most any other WMS program on the market. Um, again, just going back to that quick search because it will give you some additional information about some of the, uh, some of the other features that we have. If you want to look at, if I'm going to look up an item, item screen, very similar. Here's the item. It would be really terrific if it was in, if it was in a lot of bins, but this one only happens to be in one bin. If it's batches, you'll show you the batches. That one's not batches. Let's see if we have any more details on that one. And then it will show you the other warehouse location. Finally, uh, last one I'll show you is if you want to look up your a batch. Again, same concept. This will give you a little bit more detail. If you had an MSDS sheet, we'll, we'll show that. So there's a batch. Here's the item number, the admin, the administration, uh, the manufacturer's date, expiration, whatever details that you may have. Um, there's your quantities for that uh, batch and the breakdown. So here's the batch, here's the item number, here's the three locations that batch is stored in. So a customer has a specific thing that they want thick Canadian chocolate milk, not thin, you gotta go find it. Well, here's where it is. Okay, a few things uh, also that's in this version that is not uh, in the new version, or the, the current version, I should say. The preferences for the settings to the compact, the, the color theme, this is just piggybacking uh, some, some Fiori features, the default language. Also uh, in the newer version, um, the preferences for high finish quick scan. So these are just things that we're kind of bringing to the desktop level. And then, so this is the very early stages of the analytics. Again, we're doing the KPIs and so forth, just using standard uh, B1 HANA queries, but we're also putting a lot of that um, for the tablet for the, the warehouse managers. So if you do want to get a dashboard to say, let me see my statistical picks and ships and so forth, they can get that. So we have a, a number of them that they're working on. Just none of them happen to be here. So that's, uh, that's going to be coming as well. The other one, we didn't have the container receiving. But again, very similar. Uh, you have your container document, which they probably don't they have one. There we go. Okay. So you have a container receiving what warehouse is it going to go into? What's the container one or two? What PO is it associated? It could be many POs if you work with our containers before. And then you start to build your container, receive your container in. I should say receive container in and so forth. Um, I'm going to, so we have the containers. Um, and the last thing that we have, which uh, again will be uh, coming out to coincide with 9.2, is the, is the packing. And again, this is where you can have one, one uh, multiple customers' orders on a single pick. So for that, for that pick ticket, we had three different sales orders. I may want to put uh, two of them into one package or another. In here, I'll just pack it. What items do I want to put in here? So this, is, this will come along. We have a package table that uh, will tie into this that will have the dimensions for the packaging. You'll have your shipping information. Um, you have what's packed, and then you could do what hasn't been packed yet, and you're building one package after the other, which 
will tie directly to our EDI solution for your UCC 128s, your advanced ship notices, etc. This is uh, what we're, we're coming up with what's next. Some of them I've already mentioned in our conversations, the bin history is an example. Um, RMA processing um, is something that we'd like to get uh, into the product before the end of this year, possibly early next year at the latest, but that's, that's definitely on our, our target because uh, there's not a good solution on the market right now for RMA, whether it be for standard B1 or for mobile. Um, I've mentioned the document attachments, um, you know, document and image attachments by directional. Um, we're looking at developing a utility that uh, we'll be able to deploy with Resolve uh, WMS. That uh, the first version is going to be simple spreadsheets where you'll be able to give your customer or we'll give to you um, and you can complete them. That will be a questionnaire on specific areas of business one that needs to be set up, kind of yes, no checklist for you to work on. Um, or your customer to work on. Um, what we're looking at developing is uh, an automated process for that that will go through and diagnose the, the customer's B1 configuration and come back with uh, specific areas that we want to have set up and the indication of records that need to be updated because they don't have proper units of measure or they don't have something that uh, won't make the, the processing of WMS either accurate or optimal. So that's one thing that uh, we're going to be looking to do which will make it that much easier for us to support you uh, for your own implementations or if you choose to have us utilize, uh, utilize our services to implement the solution for you. Um, but hopefully, you know, after looking at the solution, you get a pretty good idea that you really don't need to be on site. It's a very easy product, but it, because it's easy and because it's, you know, it, it's considered an app, Again, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's not to be confused with it, lack of functionality or simple uh, functionality. It really is, is robust, and uh, we'd be very comfortable to go head-to-head -head with any other WMS that's out there that people may be considering for Business One um, because it, 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 it's good and it's really going to be um, kind of what people are looking for moving forward. I do appreciate everyone attending. And if you have questions, let me know. Um, we'll be discussing partner enablement and how the product is going to be sold um, and license and sub uh, subscriptions, information like that, um, over the next few weeks. And also uh, initially partner enablement um, that will allow you to deploy this uh, in, in your own cloud. Um, you'll be able to deploy it on the Amazon cloud, the SAP cloud, the B1 cloud when, when uh, that's generally available over the next few weeks and months. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking forward to working with your companies on getting, uh, getting those environments set up for you and then supporting you uh, on your own initiatives with the solutions. So again, thank you all very much for attending today and feel free to contact us for, for more information. Thank you all and have a great day.